I would like to open the meeting to the sharing of testimonies of healing through Christian science. Gary, Gary go ahead. We'll, we'll come back to you. Linda. Linda from Pennsylvania, please go ahead. Good evening. Thank you very much for the beautiful readings and the beautiful music before the service this evening. This evening, I'd like to express my gratitude to the Plainfield Church for showing us how to know and feel the living God and the importance of working for God. In our effort to work for God, sometimes obstacles come along and try to disrupt, discourage, get you to give up or turn back. This Sunday, as I was uh, doing some work for Plainfield, um, the website, the Plainfield website crashed. And not only that, I was unable to access it, not only from the computer, but laptops and iPads as well in the household. I um, had a lot of great support both at Plainfield and at home investigating the situation and no answers were coming forth at the time. Um, it was a couple of days into this and my son had an idea that um, enabled me now to access the playing field from my iPad. The seamless timing and the practical solution was a wonderful lesson and affirmation of God's care. In talking with a Plainfield practitioner, she pointed out that angels come and help so we can keep on working for God. These little lessons show us that if we humbly and faithfully press on, um, our work cannot be stopped. Um, and I just really am so grateful for all I'm learning here. Thank you, and have a lovely evening. Thank you. Jim from Arizona, go ahead. Thank you. I wish to re-express my gratitude for Christian Science. Recently, I developed, just overnight, a, a, a rupture, and it was about the size of a lemon. And I immediately called a practitioner, and we talked about it, and didn't say too much about it thereafter. However, last Friday, all of a sudden, I discovered that it was gone. Absolutely. And I talked to the lady that uh, takes care of my uh, bathing, and I told her about it, and she said, Oh, I saw that <laughs> Monday. <laughs> it's when we are absent from the body that we are present with the Lord. I am most grateful for this and for the practitioner's strong support. Thank you. Thank you. Sauna from Illinois, go ahead. Well, actually, it's Tom from Illinois. And I would greatly like to express my appreciation and gratitude for the incredible readings. They are so, tonight, they are so in line with, I think, where my path has been going, my energies, my focus, my prayer. And I would certainly like to express gratitude, uh, sincere gratitude, to the Plainfield practitioner who I've been working with, and actually the members of Plainfield Church, which have demonstrated such an incredible focus and understanding of God, of man, true man, and the Christ, Mary Baker Eddy. It has been truly an incredible experience and joy. The Bible studies have opened up a, a pure joy for me every day as I think more, read more about what the Bible is really saying. And I haven't, as a lifelong Christian scientist, have not studied as I have studied recently and seen things as I have been able to see them. 
I'm, I think of the walk to Emmaus and how Jesus, after his um, resurrection, went to his disciples who were walking away from his wonderful experience. They didn't get it. And I think of the years that I have walked that path to Emmaus, and I didn't get it. And listening to the Plainfield Church and all of the aspects of it has so awakened me. It's, it's been truly an amazing experience. I'd like to read from Luke, if I could. And their eyes were opened, and they knew him. And they said one to another, did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us by the way, and while he opened us, opened to us the scriptures? And so those Bible studies, you at Plainfield have truly opened up the scriptures to me. And Mrs. Eddy's writings in such a way that I find incredible joy. And I mean, I can close my eyes and truly sense and feel the burning of my heart and the joy and peace that comes with touching the Christ and having a sense of God that I have not had before. I still walk that path. And I know that the opposition is there for me not to go forward, but it can't, it can't stop me. It just can't, and it hasn't been able to. And I just want to thank you so much for what you have done. Thank you. Shardell from Pennsylvania, go ahead. Thank you. Can you hear me? We can hear you very well. Oh, thank you. I, the the uh, testimony I have for tonight unbelievably fits in with your beautiful, beautiful service tonight and the readings. I had started to pre prepare it before, and, and another um, testimony needed to be said tonight. And so I would like to express my gratitude tonight for the Unity Watches, which were originated by Mary Baker Eddy and are held by this church three times a week. These watches are very special, and it occurred to me that perhaps what is shared and sent to mankind is the same idea that the disciples experienced when they gathered together in prayer. During the watch one night, this little prayer came to me for our services. We thank you, Father, Mother, for the music to glorify you, for the readings to gain understanding of your holy word that heals, and for the testimonies to offer our gratitude for the fruitage of your love. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Fairly, Fairly from Maryland, go ahead. Um. I have recently been thinking about my experience since coming to Plainfield two years ago. As I have testified before, I have been suffering clinical depression for the past five years. Since I basically had a good personal life with my husband, I, I've begun realizing what brought me down. Raised in the Episcopal Church, for the, fast, for the past 30 years I had been in Christian science but had never really been able to feel successful with it. I did not need physical healing, but I had come to have a great fear of what would happen to me after I died, fear that I'd been left out by God for some reason I did not know. My life was lacking in true meaning. I understood that Christian science is the whole truth of our existence, but I had never received the kind of instruction or involvement with others in Christian science that I sorely needed. Rather suddenly, when I found Plainfield on the web and called my practitioner, I was healed of the depression very quickly. Her dedication and all the teaching that is being offered at Plainfield saved a wanderer 
as I was. I am grateful for the whole worldwide community that has been attracted here with the inspired weekly lessons, Bible studies, roundtables, the practitioner's constant availability, all the literature they make available, including books by early workers from Mrs. Eddy's time prohibited by the Mother Church. I feel we are members in a community of saints anchored by our church at Plainfield, for which I am eternally, eternally grateful. And thank you for those very lovely, beautiful readings. Thank you. Luann from New York, go ahead. Thank you. I'm very grateful tonight to God for leaving me, leading me here to this church and to my practitioner so that I may be healed under the guidance of his loving care and protection. I have so much to understand about Christian science and God I thought I must, I know I must be, sorry. I know that I must keep trusting in his law in this process in order to be guided out of the darkness. I'm very grateful for all those who work and pray for their sacrifice and constant vigilance, not only for me as an individual, but for the world as a whole. Sometimes I feel like the climb is too difficult and I long to rest, but soon after begin to stumble and fall, forgetting to be grateful for the climb at all. I don't know what's on the path ahead, <clears throat> but I'm learning I can experience a more harmonious journey if I keep trusting in truth. I am most grateful to my practitioner for the dedication whose Continual support and prayer keep me from burying myself deep in the mud of personal sense, turning my thoughts back in line with God, rebuking error, and renewing my faith, and strengthening my legs for the climb. To me, these feel like very short sentiments that barely touch the magnitude of the gratitude I feel in my heart. I know where my thought was before coming here, and to have that change to hope in God in such a short time is a blessing I could never have imagined. Our God is indeed a merciful God. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Connie from Texas, go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I want to express gratitude for this week's lesson. Um, the first, I think it's in the responsive readings where it says, cleanse thou me from secret faults. And I learned something about that this week. I was uh, talking to my practitioner, and I guess I told her something I had been doing. I'd been enjoying getting out and around. And she said, you know, you weren't always that way. And I said, what? She said, whenever we started talking, you didn't want to leave the house. You didn't want to go anywhere. You didn't want to do anything. And now here you are going all around. You've had a healing, and you haven't even noticed it or expressed gratitude for it. And uh, I was amazed. I, the healing was so complete and so thorough that I had forgotten I'd ever been that way. And so um, I do want to express gratitude and uh, for, for Plainfield, our wonderful lessons, and the Bible study, my practitioner, and all the members. Thank you so much. Thank you. Elizabeth, Elizabeth from Georgia, go ahead. It's been about a year since I called a practitioner um, in this church and started studying Christian science. It's taught at Plainfield. I'd been, a, been raised in science and thought I understood it, but something was missing, certainly missing was the watching. I had no idea about that, just words that I read. But also what was missing was the spirit. And the letter is easy. Anyone can study it and think they get it. But if you don't have a correct sense of God and his omnipotence and love, it won't get you very far. 
And that sense of God's presence and love is a precious gift that I am gratefully learning to understand and cultivate more each day, and that it's becoming more natural to turn to God for everything and ask Him what, how, and when I should do things and just put my trust in Him. It's not been an easy thing to do since I've not had a lot of practice in going to God first, but I know I'm making progress because I I feel closer to Him and I have a peace that I haven't had before. And I'm just really grateful for that progress. And I'm also grateful for the roundtables and Bible studies. Uh, Each one has helped bring more understanding. And each one is certainly a treatment in itself. And thank you all to the wonderful testimonies tonight. Thank you. Day Day from Maryland, go ahead. Yesterday, while working on a project, I came across a quote by Margaret Mead online that says, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has. This reminded me of Mrs. Eddy's, we today in this classroom are enough to convert the world if we are of one mind, for then the whole world will feel the influence of this mind. And the message from Christ Jesus on the Plainfield Live broadcast page. When two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. There is so much going on all over the world that needs to be healed, and God is the answer to all of it. I'm so grateful to know that unity is inevitable and love is indestructible, and I'm grateful to be part of any group that's working to get the entire world back to God. Thank you all for your continued work and for tonight's meeting. Thank you. I'm grateful for a proof of God's care I had today. Um, I had a recall on my car and I called a few days ago and set up an appointment and they checked and they said yes they had the the parts and today would be a good day to bring it in well a loving member of this church bella offered to pick me up at the car dealer take me to work pick me up at work and then take me back to pick up my car which i'm very grateful for when i got there this morning um, the gentleman looked he says oh we only have one of the parts So why don't you just take your car and come back another day? And I said, no, that's not acceptable. I said, "Um, a friend of mine has offered to give me a ride. And I said, "Um, they did tell me they have the parts. And I said, this is not acceptable. And I just knew in my heart that God would take care of this. So the gentleman at the car dealer said, Well, we'll see what we can do. Well, I remember a practitioner giving me a statement um, last year that the power of a right idea cannot be stopped. And I said, thank you, God, this is a right idea. Everything worked out, and this will be taken care of. Well, a couple hours later, the car dealer called and said, this is amazing we have all the parts for your car and it will be ready um, for you to pick it up this evening. I just want to thank God because um, a lot of people would have just said, oh well, I'll go home. And I knew that was not God's plan. His hand was upon this. And I'm grateful for all the practitioner help I've received because that statement was given for a different situation but it was also helpful in healing this situation today. I'm just so grateful to be part of this healing church and for all the testimonies and the readings tonight. Thank you. Thank you. I am grateful tonight for all the times that God has protected me in my life, even when he was protecting me from myself. 
perhaps especially then. I, I think back all the close calls and near misses. Now I realize they were all prompts for me to wake up and to start listening to God. I'm grateful for his patience with me and how when I was finally broken, he had a path ready for me to take so I could start to become who he made me to be. What a joy it is to be here learning and working for God, and I'm grateful for the weekly lessons and daily practitioner support that help keep me on this path. Thank you. And then... Hi, this is Lauren. I live in California near San Francisco. I just want to express gratitude for the resources that Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent has. Uh, this is being recorded uh, a few days before the Wednesday service, so I've not heard any of today's testimonies. But in regard to last week, it was certainly a spiritual feast. Almost every testimony had some thing about which I was working on and was so valuable. And for that, I'm so grateful. Um, some of the concerns people have had with the uh, traditional Boston Christian Science uh, materials is that they're not instructive, not metaphysical. And the Plainfield materials are so instructive and metaphysical. For example, last week there were things about how to deal with one's weight uh, and things of that nature. Uh, also things having to do with uh, specific situations. Of, and so it was just wonderful to hear that. And the round tables, the um, Bible studies, um, the articles in the Liberator, and the um, testimonies by the uh, practitioners, all how instructive to teach us how to live a spiritual life here and now, as opposed to just, um, and I think that's what's going on in some of the other Christian science churches, that they're just, oh well, I had a problem, I called the practitioner and it got better. Whereas uh, in Plainfield, it's you call someone with a problem or you listen to the program, uh, various uh, offerings online with the problem, and then the result is, okay, here's what you can do, here's how to pray, uh, here's how to align with God, here's the truth. And so there's a much more emphasis on individual spiritual growth, and I'm so grateful for that. And thank you very much for this wonderful service, and thank you all for your contributions. Good night. Thank you to both of you. I'd like to say that I'm very grateful for, well, many things, but this one is the golden text in this week's lesson. And it says, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord. And together with that, if you haven't seen it yet, you should look at the daily watch that's posted on our website. It goes right along with it. And I read it and I found it so helpful. It said, to, what it meant to me was, it's one thing to get the right words, but if your heart's not right, it's not going to work. The other day, I had, a had to go meet with somebody that we were working out the details of a project. And it seemed to be a bit challenging you know, repeated attempts to get things straightened out and just right. And I got to our meeting a little early, and I sat down in the car, and I was, started thanking God for just the extra time that I could sit there and talk to Him. And I realized that, typically, I might have been thinking and planning to make sure I got all my words right before I went into the meeting. But this time, I says, Dear God, I don't even want the words. I just want my heart to be right with You. And I just simply sat there and asked for God's blessing on this meeting without planning out what to say or what to do or anything. Dear God, it's all in your hands. All I want is my heart to be right with you. We went in. Everything was resolved quickly. And the project was finished very peacefully and completely and in the right way. And for that, I have thanks to God because... Most certainly, I couldn't have planned it out, and thank God I didn't try. Okay, Florence from Georgia, go ahead. Thank you. Yes, tonight I'd like to give gratitude for all the Bible examples that we can look to for how Christian science brings the Bible alive so that we can follow the examples in there in our spiritual growth. 
Last week, in the lesson, part of it from Science and Health said, Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many. Is literally fulfilled when we are conscious of the supremacy of truth by which the nothingness of error is seen, and we know that the nothingness of error is in proportion to its wickedness. This makes it so clear that Christ Jesus, what he was doing when he stood at the tomb of Lazarus, And in the midst of all the weeping and wailing, he gave thanks. He gave thanks that meant he was grateful for the ever presence, all power, all wisdom and intelligence, the all source of action and the love of God. I felt that this level of gratitude has to include a great love for the truth itself, that he obviously had no doubt. When you have that kind of love for the truth, there can be no doubt. And this was an example of it. Of course, it meant that Lazarus was alive, even though, to moral sense, he was dead. It also points to me that this is what we are supposed to do when he says that we should rejoice in tribulation, because it proves that our love for the truth, for what's spiritual, what God is God's perfection and our perfection, that we can trust it in times of trouble. If we are grateful for, for it, it takes, off our, uh, it takes our eyes off the appearance and lifts us to the magnitude and the power of God. And I'm sure this is why we have many testimonies about when people are so grateful really indeed grateful, the healings follow. I am so grateful for the earlier workers who have put some of these understandings in simpler terms so that we can use to follow our spiritual growth. I'm grateful for God's grace, Christ Jesus, Mrs. Eddy's tireless work to show us our way of salvation. I'm grateful for the the hymns tonight, very beautiful, very beautiful readings. And for everyone's inspiration, because believe me, it's healing the world more than we can ever know. Thank you. Thank you. Mary, go ahead. Good evening, everyone. I uh, have a couple things to read. The first from the church website bulletin board from Vermont. I had been feeling a little down lately. My sister seemed to be having some health issues. I was feeling distant with my daughter and overwhelmed with all I have have to do this spring, cleaning along with everyday household duties. Along with that, I was feeling alone and lonely. Every morning, I listened to Dear Joseph read the weekly lesson on our website And this morning, I heard one of the most beautiful lessons. I printed it out on my computer and read it over again. Sometimes a particular lesson will just fit, and this week's lesson just fits me. I don't think the week is going to be long enough for me to absorb all the great lessons to be learned in this week's lesson. I can't say enough about Christian science and all that it teaches me and how it has affected my life. It has brought me through many minor issues as well as major ones. Thank you. Thank you so very much to the Plainfield Christian Science Church for my practitioners there, all of these things from the bottom of my heart. I also thank Joseph for his readings. Wonderful job. I look forward to them every morning, even before I get out of bed. Much love to you all. And then this one from Australia. I listened to your wonderful testimony meeting today. It was so uplifting and moving, just what I needed, as I was feeling quite tired and strained with all the demands at this time. I'm looking forward to the time when I can be more involved with the Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent and join your church. You are so blessed to be independent How fortunate that you were excommunicated from the material organization 
and uncontaminated from the regime from the regime mentality. This independence allows the freedom of spirit to be expressed without human interference. It is the quality of the thought that is felt. You are a church of soul, so vastly different to the material organization. With much love to you and all the Plainfield contributors. I'd like to just add tonight how grateful I am also for the beautiful readings and the beautiful testimonies. There were so many of them. I could say ditto, ditto, ditto to that. I've experienced that. I'm so grateful for all that I've learned being a member here. And certainly, as a few of you mentioned, uh, has to do with the watching. Uh, I know before coming here, I used to worry, even though I had had quite a bit of Christian science in my background, but I would still worry about, well, what was going to happen to the world, all this stuff going on. And uh, when I came here, learning about the watches, learning that this is what was done in Mrs. Eddy's home, learning the great uh, power that they have, gave me such comfort and also a sense of of purpose. Uh, The world is in our consciousness. It's what we are thinking about it, and that is where the dominion lies. And as we do this watching daily, on a daily basis, watching our own thought, and then doing our individual watches, and then our unity watch. It's a great power in miscellany. And I love this, where Mrs. Eddy says, a small group of wise thinkers is better than a wilderness of dullards and stronger than the might of empires. Think about that. Stronger than the might of empires a group of wise thinkers. And that's what we're getting here. Those of you who are learning true science, a group of wise thinkers working together in this way, there is nothing that cannot be overcome. And the overcoming belongs to each and every one of us, each and every day, moment by moment. In the hymn we sang tonight, God is watching with the watchful. God is life that never sleeps. Well, God is watching with us, and thank God for that. Thank you.